Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Craft the World. And on this episode, we are going to be continuing where we left off. Now, uh, in between this video and the last video, I went ahead and told my guys to make a few more potions. I, I came in here and uh, gave them the, uh, the stuff they needed. Uh, you can see they're going to make 33 health potions, uh, 3 power potions, uh, just so I have a little bit there for them to work with. I do want to make at least one of these uh, right off the bat so that my guy will have that to uh, to mess around with. Let's see, is it in there already? Yeah, it's it made instantly. Uh, there you are right there. Let's uh, drag that in there, and you will see he gets a little bit extra skill there, which is going to work out because he doesn't have very much skill points at all. But I went ahead and put most of that, you know, the roots that I had into uh, doing the, uh, the health potions. And the reason behind that is we're about to go into a big fight and they need the health potions more than they need anything else. They're going to be taking some hits, and it's just going to help them out overall. And you can see I have them cutting down a few more of the roots, as well as a lot more trees. Uh, yeah, the reason I'm doing that again is uh, we definitely need the water up here. We also need some more of the wood as well. So I've been figuring, you know, why they're here, they might as well take a moment and start chopping stuff down. It's going to help me out in the long run, and uh, yeah, we, we need it. So... Uh, I'm gonna take a minute and let them do most of that, not all of it, but most of it, before we go down and take on the uh, the guardian down there. Now I did put down a few more uh, things of alcohol for them, the little beer, because they are just absolutely loving that stuff. They're drinking that stuff like, like crazy. My comfort rating is excellent at 77, not as high as it could be, but that's all right. It's it's high enough. And of course, this is my uh, elevator shaft. It's not exactly completely done. You can see the walls on the outside. It needs to be framed, uh, most likely in that middle. That looks like uh, you know actual steel, but that's really expensive on iron. I just don't have very much iron. I do have 380 coins. Some of you guys have made the the comment that I just don't spend my coins enough, and it's kind of a little bit uh, disappointing or irritating to some of you guys. I'm always uh, kind of saving those up because when I do these videos, I try to do stuff for you guys that you may not do for yourself and that may mean saving up coins for the entire game and getting enough for you to buy that one item that costs you know 500 gold coins that nobody else in their right mind would ever save up to get just so we can see whether it's actually worth it now there is nothing in this game that does that yet but that doesn't mean they won't add something down the road so I like having a nice chunk of change in there just in case plus I think the coins give you an unfair advantage because you can't rely on it. Now, when I dig a hole, I may get, you know, five coins out of a small little area. You may dig a giant hole and get no coins out of it. It's kind of a random thing. So if I go in there and I buy stuff with my gold coins and you're watching and you're like, okay, I want to do the exact same thing he does in the order he does it, you're not always going to be able to follow along. You may have to go the slow way. And if you got to go the slow way, I want to show you what that's like so that you know how to get past it and you know what to expect and uh, what waves and things to, to see in that order. So that's why I'm doing it that way. But again, you know, if you're doing it, you're more than welcome to spin that. Uh, I definitely would be myself, but it, it does... Um, it does change the gameplay for you, so just keep that in mind. It's not going to be the same style that you would find somewhere else otherwise. There's a lot of freaking dwarves coming up and down here. I don't know why are they coming over here to get this stuff. They were trying to. You know what? Let's put some minions down. That should help them out so they don't have to come up here and get all of this stuff, and they can just spend their effort to actually chop stuff down because they got a lot of it to do right here. Now, we are just killing a little bit of time here. To allow them to make the potions because as you can see they are making them down here and it takes them a little while and instead of just sitting here kind of watching them do that I figured the other guys the other you know dwarves we have the ten of them that can't help out down here because we only have three stations for these uh, might as well be doing something productive and of course what they can be doing is gathering more resources so I can come in here and I can actually tell them to make more of this stuff now they haven't picked up any of the roots yet which is why we can't make any more of it what about these fire of elixirs? What were these things? Make a supply of these elixirs for your dwarf mages so they can launch fireballs with their staff. You know what? We're going to do it. We're going to make a few of those for this fight just so we can see what those look like. Elixirs of arrows. Uh, dwarf mages can shoot ice arrows to slow down a group of enemies. We're going to go ahead and make a little bit of that as well. Not too much, but a little bit. I don't like the transfiguration. 
Obliteration, I don't really like either. That gets rid of all the stats for your dwarves, your skills, so you can start from scratch. So if you get a dwarf who already has hunting, and you're like, well, no, I wanted him to have, uh, you know, these other three skills. I didn't want hunting on there at all. You can use that to get rid of that skill and give him all the skills you want from scratch. Not really, uh, you know, something I'm looking forward to, you know, really doing on any of my dwarves. Uh, of course, some people just, if they find that, rather than do that, use that skill until they get to that point if they want to, they just kill the dwarf off, which seems kind of cold and a little bit heartless to you, to me anyways. But, you know, I mean, I, I definitely can see why if you're being a stickler and you want that, uh, that min-max, you know, like you really want to max out his ability. Why are they just sitting in there? Do, can they not go up? Is it broken? Well, what's going on there? Oh, can they not get up because that is there? Seriously? Oh, I can't even cast a, a portal up there. So they are stuck. They don't know what to do. Oh, guys, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, fine. We'll use a portal. Jeez, oh, you guys are ridiculous sometimes. Okay, I can't believe I'm using a portal to, to clear up a, an elevator shaft. There we go. Give you guys another reason to come up here. I wish I could tell them to fight something. Maybe this. Maybe they'll come up here to fight this thing rather quickly. They won't be able to hit it, except if they're a mage. They might be able to get right here on the edge and kind of shoot down at it with their, their lightning bolt. But it should get them up here. Fighting is one of the few things that will get them in an area very, very quickly. Nope, they do not want to use any of it. Dude, you got to be kidding me. What? Can I not? I can't even move. They are stuck here. All of them. They are all stuck there. What about up here? Are they finally up here? Yes, they are. No, you are not leaving. So I have... I have taken you over. There we go. Now we release you. What about down here? Can you guys move finally? Have I done it? Control? No? There we go. Okay, so that was getting in the way. That it was that's ridiculous, dude. We cannot let that happen again. Okay, so my I, I'm thinking the light will help. Maybe. There we go. So that should not happen again. I can't believe that happened at all. That was just ridiculous. And that's why nothing was getting done. The other guys were just stuck there. I'm glad we didn't go into a fight because they would not have come down to help. And I would have been heartbroken if three of my guys showed up and they all got annihilated after I spent this much effort to make sure that they are all well equipped and not fully, you know, decked out and they have everything going for them. Like that would just be ridiculous, but not beyond the realm of possibility. I, you know, I have seen worse things happen. And uh, so, yeah, you definitely want to make sure you don't leave anybody behind. I, I do wish that they will at some point put a feature in here that most games like this already have. It's just standard, which is the uh, the idle button that lets you know if you have a dwarf that is uh, sitting idle somewhere. That's, uh, you know, stuck up here on an island, uh, stuck in a hole somewhere, and you just can't get out. Because if you teleport people in to an area and there's no tunnel out, when, they, when that portal disappears, a lot of the time, they'll just stand there. They, they don't have any other way out. They won't start digging their way out because they will only dig where you tell them to dig. Now, maybe they can incorporate it into the game where these guys will start working their way back to the base any way they, they deem necessary, which could really destroy whatever your setup is and cause more headaches for you in the long run. But yeah, I think it would be better than having them just sit there or just give you the idle button so that you can scroll through and see where that guy is and then you can go in there and fix it yourself. But they haven't done either one of those things yet, so I don't know if they ever will, but, you know, you can hope and you can dream, and uh, I think it would really go good with the game. So let's go ahead and put this down. They're going to go ahead and start picking up some of these potions because I do need the potions there before we go down there, guys. And then we're going to go down there and we're going to wreck some stuff. Now, I need to make sure that all my dwarves are uh, completely healed up because we're about to go down there. You are getting attacked, that's why you're not fully healed. So you need to go to sleep. Everybody else... Yep, everybody else is fully done except for you, who needs to go to sleep. Yep, that's it. That's all of them right there, guys. What about you two? Uh, well, you're working on the uh, the extras, the cool stuff that's going to make this battle kind of one of the ones for the record books, guys. I mean, the dragon is not an easy creature to hit. You either need range creature, or rain uh, dwarfs such as your bow and arrow, 
or your mage, or you need a lot of scaffolding. If you put down a lot of scaffolding, your dwarves with uh, the melee can get up there and they can start hitting the enemy and doing damage that way. But if you don't have scaffolding to put down everywhere, you're going to need that range. These items here are going to make the range uh, dwarves that I have even more powerful. Now, it's not going to help out the, the guns, but, of course, I can always make more of those ammo. I already have 40 of them made, so I think that's going to be fine for them. Uh, we could always make a few more arrows, which, you know, this is one of the things I was waiting for. So we'll go ahead and make a few more arrows because we do have that on a different table. We'll go ahead and make some fire arrows as well. Go ahead and make uh, 110 of those. And I think that's going to be pretty much all the special ammo that we can bring to bear on this one. So as soon as all of that is done, or a good portion of it, I shouldn't say all of it, because that's a little bit more than we actually need. But as soon as a good enough portion of that is done, we're going to go in there and we're going to attack. We do have a waving coming in about 28 minutes. I think we're going to attack in about 5. So if we do that maybe 5 to 7 minutes, we should have enough time to recuperate after that fight. Because the fight itself will probably take 8 or 9 minutes itself. Because, you know, a guardian, not the easiest guy to take on. And then a dragon at the same time, not the easiest guy to take on. The two of them combined, pretty rough. And so I expect a lot of my dwarves to go in there, do a little bit of damage, and then have to go back and go to go home and go to rest. So we're going to have to use a few of those health potions, not health potions, those power potions, just to give ourselves the amount of mana that we need to uh, have our, our dwarves be able to teleport back very quickly, heal up, and then get back into the battle. If they have to walk back, then they risk the, the chance of dying along the journey if they fall down and things of that sort, which you don't want happening. And then, of course, it just takes longer. You know, if your dwarves show up in mass at one time and go in and rush the room, they do a lot more damage than if they show up one at a time. And you did that on purpose, didn't you? You did that because I have all my guys fully, uh, fully healed. And you know I can't send you to bed just yet. Now, they can only fall off these wooden ones. If you put a stone one down or anything better than the stone, they won't fall off of those nearly as often or at all. So, yeah, that's, that's definitely something we could have improved. So that little thing right there that we saw would not happen. But until you improve it, you're going to have little things like that that just kind of get in the way. Now, they finally made all the uh, potions for us, uh, or at least all the ones they felt like making. Now this guy's actually making something else. They're making some of the fire arrows, but none of the ice ones just yet. So that's kind of unfortunate. What about this guy? Did he finally go and put his stuff in? Yep, there he is right there. So we're going to tell you to go to bed. Where are you going? Oh, he's going down there. Oh, okay, so we got three more guys down here making stuff. And these guys are making it on the lesser table. Okay, I like that. So we do have some of the ice arrows done, just not a whole lot of them. And of course, if you ever want to find out just how many of whatever you have, you can go into their equipment and you can see in here. We have three silver arrows, uh, 91 still being made. We have three fire ones, uh, 92 still being made. We have 40 of these already made for the ammo. Let's see, what about over here? We have nine elixirs of fire, nine elixirs of ice arrows. So yeah, they still have a little bit more work to go. And yeah, it's, I'm going to give them time. I'm going to give them time. We're going to go ahead and zoom out and let them go to work. Maybe zoom in a little bit more so you can actually see it being done. A little bit more. There we go. Put it right there on the screen. We'll just hold it right there for a minute, guys. Watch it in all its little glory right there. A very, very cool game. I remember playing games like this, like Command & Conquer, where you'd sit back and watch your base kind of slowly progress over time and uh, get bigger because you get the resources you need. This kind of brings me back to that day, although this one's not nearly as... I won't say violent, because, you know, Command & Conquer's really not violent. It, I mean, it is a war game, but it doesn't really show graphically what happens when you fight other enemies. But it's not geared towards only violence, not like Command & Conquer was. Command & Conquer was just search and destroy for the most part. It wasn't just like build your base up. You could do that to start with so that you could build up an army, but this one, this one can be solely about building up your base. Like once you get a handle on the waves, which is that little excitement every so often of violence uh, that people like to have in their video games, you know, to, to give them that. And then another guy fell down right there. We are going to fix that then, man, because that is just a freaking nuisance. Let's see, do we have another one already? I bet we do. I bet we have some more of those stone ones to put down right there. Yeah, we're going to put down a stone one because that, that is unacceptable. We can't keep repairing these guys, especially since we're about to get into a big battle. And they're walking over this a lot. 
so let's see. Where are you going? We'll do it hey ourselves. Yeah. No, I don't want you to jump. I want you to climb, sucker. Here we go. Ah, oh, come on. There you go. Right there. Chop it. Okay, now let's see. Can we put it down? Nice. Okay, so we'll release you, and we'll look for that other guy who is one heart down right there, and you're going to sleep. Because we do not want anybody who isn't fully done. These guys are pumping away at the potions, which is great. The downside to telling these guys to do all of this and then not letting them finish is that some of these guys will want to stay up here and keep working, even after we go down there and fight. So unless all of this stuff is done down here, you're going to have to use the spell to summon them down there. Use that uh, the gathering spell right here, the, the horn get them to go down there but again once you get rid of that horn because you're gonna have them go in and charge when they come back here to get healed up a few of them will be like no I'll just stay over here and finish doing my job because that's my skill my skill is telling me that I'm a carpenter I should be doing woodworking my, my skill is alchemy I should be in there doing that I'm a blacksmith I should be over here doing that even over some of the other stuff you just told me to do now fighting is one of the highest priority stuff you can tell people to do they pretty much will drop everything they are doing to go and fight for you but it is balanced with how low they are on life if they're really low on life they may not want to go in there to the fight but they may not go to sleep on their own either because health potions kind of throw that off just a tad bit what they will do is they will use the health potion on them and if they are so close to dying that like one more hit would kill them they use the health potion and they go up to maybe a heart and a little bit more of another one that's enough that they're not really worried about it. They're right there on the edge. If they got hit one more time, they may go to bed on their own, but they're not quite there yet. And so they will go back and start doing other stuff because they're too low on life to join the fight again, but not low enough that they feel like they should go to rest. And until you catch that on your own or until they get hurt a little bit by falling and go to rest and get fully healed, they're going to be out of commission because of it. And it's just one of those little quirks that you'll see and you'll get used to over time. Now, they may eventually fix that. And by the time you're playing the game and you're watching this video, you're like, oh, that's not even a thing. I've never seen that before. Uh, maybe it isn't anymore, but it definitely is now at the moment as I'm making these videos. That is something that you'll see. And uh, it's kind of a little bit of annoying, but not in a bad way. It's more like experience. You know, like once you've played the game enough, you start to realize these little quirks and you start being able to compensate for them. And then you actually start to feel like you've you developed some skill to the game because otherwise it's just uh, build and build and fight, build and fight, build and fight. It doesn't really require a lot of knowledge. Everything that you need to know is in your, you know, your tech tree. You can come in here and click through it and go through everything you want. You can see exactly what you need to do and the order that you need to do it before you get to that point. But once you've actually done it before and you know how to get through that stuff the fastest and you're actually able to progress uh, pretty quickly then you actually feel that like sense of accomplishment which is actually really cool guys so I am glad that we finally gotten to that point where we're not so noobish I won't say that we're not noobs at all because we do still make mistakes but I think they're a lot less than what we used to so we got 59 silver arrows 33 fire arrows we got uh, 40 of these which is good how many potions we only have 10 elixirs and 14 of the ice ones so that may not be enough for the entire fight but that's all right I mean, we've been waiting for a little while, and we're going to go down there now. We're actually going to go ahead and start digging our way into the base. Because as you can see, we came up from underneath it. And we really don't want that uh, that position. Now, how are we going to get down there is the story. Maybe from this side over here. Yeah, I think we will get down here from this side. So let's go ahead and put a portal there. We will put a light here to get our guys to start showing up at least one guy I'll put some scaffolding down let's see we don't have any power so I'm gonna have to use a little bit of our potions uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use all of them one and we're gonna go ahead and tell our guys to start showing up <laughs> okay we're gonna put some scaffolding here just so if they do fall down they don't fall very far as soon as all my guys start showing up I'm gonna tell them to start digging up and get into here and they come in here and fight. I might have to take one over myself before uh, they will move because I do have the gather one here. I don't know if they will do anything why. Yeah, I don't think they will. Select dwarf, take hey control. There we go. Now I don't want to dig into it just yet because if I dig into it, 
the enemy is able to fire through it and they will attack me. So we're good right there. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to put some scaffolding down right there so they can get into here. We'll put some scaffolding here. We'll take that one down. There we go. And that way they can just get up here on the top row and walk right in. They don't have to worry about being knocked down over and over and over again. Uh, because that is a thing. They will be knocked down several times if you let them have that happen. Okay, here we go, guys. We are going in. Everyone in, guys. Attack! Attack! guys! You can do it! Oh, God! Oh, God! Put down a portal. Put down a portal. Come on, guys. You can do it. Holy crap. Wow. My guys are kicking some serious, but we already got him down to a, a little uh, health bubble and a half. And he's only hurt a few of my guys so far. Let's put down another portal. So you guys can get out of there. Come on, kill him. Kill him. Oh, dude, they are wrecking face, man. I cannot believe my guys are doing so well. They're about to... Yeah, Guardian is down. Guardian is down, guys. Yes. Fifth portal part right here, part used to build a portal between worlds. I don't have enough steel, so we will have to go look for iron on the next uh, next video before we can make this for the final piece. But fantastic right there. Yes, and we got a mithril bar, as you can see, right there on the screen. And now we're attacking the dragon. Come on, wreck it. Wreck it. Oh, yes. Yes. Come on, dude, you can do it. You have special ammo. You have magical potions. Wow, that one looks very powerful. I don't know if he was using a magical potion or what, but that one looks extremely powerful. Why aren't you attacking? Come on. Wait, are you afraid to do it by yourself? You have two hearts. Two hearts are better than one, man. Come on. Ah, oh, jeez. You're all going home? You're all going home. Oh, you know what? It's because I didn't tell them to attack it. They are like, no, no, I got better tasks to do. That's what the thing I was warning you about, guys. They won't come down here until you actually physically tell them to attack because that's the highest priority. But even then, only two of them came back. Now we got three. There we go. Come on. One more hit. One more hit. Yes. Wow. We got some stake out of that, guys. Not very much, you know, as in the way of armor because sometimes you can get some really good armor from those guys. But we did get some stake from them which is uh, Dragon State, guys. Can you imagine? That's pretty freaking sweet. <laughs> okay, guys, let's see what's in here. We're going to put some lights down so we can actually see a little bit up here. Actually, not right there, because we're going to be chopping that down here pretty soon. And we'll put one up here. Come on, guys, you want to come in here. Now, this thing right here actually gives you more gold drops. Definitely worth taking back to your base. I already have like three or four of them. I might have four already, to be honest. So I'm going to leave that where it is. I may do something with this room at some point down the road. Because even once you're done with the level, you can come back into it and you can uh, design it however you want after the level's over. After you've gone to the next one, you can go back to one of the earlier levels. So yeah, keep that in mind that even though you're moving on to the next one, doesn't mean you can never come back and, and finish something that you really, really want to finish. So uh, when you start a project and you're like, oh, this is going to take me a very, very long time, uh, you can do that. It's, it's not going to be a complete loss. It's not like, oh, I'm only going to be able to do two hours and all that work is for nothing. I won't ever get to see it finished. Uh, no, that's, that's not the case. Uh, definitely worth spending a little bit of time and making sure the map looks the way you want it to look and that it's worth it for you. Although, uh, I think, guys, what we're going to end up doing is uh, ending the video here. Uh, you know, I do want to thank you all for watching. We did finally kill the last guardian, guys. That was the last guardian that we needed to kill. There's a little bit of iron down here, so we'll definitely have to come down here and get that. But, yeah, we finally did it, guys. That has been fantastic. It has been a great journey going through the storyline of this game. I cannot tell you how much fun I had. This is uh, by far one of the you know greatest games that I've played in a long time. That's just nice and relaxing to come home to and just sit there and have a good time with it. Uh, it's not one of these ones that are overly complicated, and, and sometimes you just want something very simple. You don't always want overly complicated. You don't always want something very uh, you know adrenaline pumping kind of game either. So definitely suggest that if you like games like this, you give this one a shot. If you watched any of my videos, you will know that uh, it can be challenging at times. It's, it's not all uh, easy. The very first few levels definitely made for you to, uh, to get to know it and learn and kind of do what you want to do and, and build some stuff. But as you get to higher, higher levels, uh, it becomes more difficult, more combat-based, and then it opens up the game to a lot more things that you didn't have access to in the beginning. So uh, definitely worthwhile. And every level takes on characteristics of its own that 
uh, really make them unique and very special, guys. So, again, I want to thank you all for watching. If you do enjoy these videos, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe. It uh, definitely helps grow the channel, guys. I greatly appreciate it. And I will catch you all next time.